Greetings fellow dungeon delvers and welcome to Dorans and Dragons, where we work together to come up with Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition builds for your favorite League of Legends champions. Today we're building Viego, the Ruined King. Viego is the ruler of the Kingdom of Camivore. Though he had no interest in the people, or ruling in general, he only cared for his wife, Isolde. No one's sure whether the assassin was hired by his enemies or jilted allies, but we do know the assassin missed their mark and struck Isolde instead of Viego. Viego was driven nearly insane and spent his entire fortune and all of the kingdom's coin on trying to save his wife, but ultimately failed. He languished until he heard of the Blessed Isles and the waters it held that could cure any ailment. Viego stormed the island, slaughtering all who resisted him and placed his wife's body in the water. Isolde rose, furious at being ripped from the peace of death, took Viego's blade and impaled him through the heart. This corrupted the Blessed Isles in a wave of corruption and turned him into an undead being. He stayed there for a thousand years before continuing his conquest. Until Isolde returns to him, all will fall before the ruined king. Before we get started with the build, go ahead and like the video and hit that subscribe button so you're always notified when we release our builds. We'd like to thank one of this month's Doran's Blade patrons, Crafty Pete. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to us. Crafty Pete chose Viego to build as part of the rewards for our Blade Tier patrons. Come join us over on Patreon today for just a dollar to get access to our awesome Discord community where we talk League and D&D all day long. Alright, now let's get into it. Here's a quick preview of the build. For race, we're going with Reborn. Per usual, our stats are going to be determined using the standard array. For our stat priorities, we're going to max Charisma and dump Strength. Our leveling path is going to be straight Warlock for all 20 levels. Viego's passive, Sovereign's Domination, is going to be the Eldritch Invocation, Mask of Many Faces. Our Q, Blade of the Ruined King, is going to come from Blade of Disaster and Hexblade's Curse. His W, Spectral Maw, will be covered by Power Word Stun. Our E, Harrowed Path, will come from the Darkness Spell and Devil's Sight. And finally we get our ultimate, Heartbreaker from Scatter. For race, we're going to reach into the Unearthed Arcana and pluck out the Reborn. As an undead king made that way by your waifu shanking you with your own sword, this is a perfect match. We're going to gain a plus two to our charisma and a plus one to our dex. We're also going to pick up Deathless Nature, which gives us a few features to match our very dead but still somehow shredded body. You have advantage on saves against disease and being poisoned and just resistance to poison damage in general. You have advantage on death saves. You don't need to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep, and magic can't even put you to sleep. It also lets you finish a long rest in four hours as long as you just chill during that time. So you can use this video to sponsor Skillshare. Nah, I'm just kidding. We're too small for that. But you could definitely use this time to learn a new skill or scout for your party or keep guard while they keep snoozing. Our final feature is gonna be knowledge from a past life. Anytime you make a skill check, you can add a d6 to it, using memories from your past life to assist you. You have charges on this based on your proficiency bonus, and they recharge on a long rest. For background, try to contain your surprise, but we're going with Noble. This is going to give you proficiency with History and Persuasion, and the Position of Privilege feature. Which basically just means you get invited to the fancy parties because of those rocking abs, even though you eke out the black mist wherever you go. This might be unfamiliar to Viego, but for our stats, we're going to have a balanced relationship with the Standard Array. We have no multi-classing requirements, so feel free to roll with impunity, you savages. Charisma is going to be the driving force of this build, so we're going to open up with that. Quickness of mind and body is going to be big as well, so we'll take dexterity next. We'll grab our constitution after that as a reflection of the abuse our body has taken as a host of the Black Mist. Intelligence is going to be next for his cunning. Wisdom is going to be average since he didn't learn much from his royal experiences, and we'll dump strength since it really doesn't help the build. For equipment, we're going to start things off with a longsword. And once we hit level 3, we'll bump that up to a greatsword. But don't worry, we'll explain why when we break that level down. Speaking of level breakdowns, we're going to open things up with a level in Warlock. Warlocks are a super front-loaded class, so bear with me as we dig through these first few levels. Warlocks have a d8 hit die and give us proficiencies with light armor and simple weapons. We're going to flex that charisma with intimidation and deception skill proficiencies. At first level, Warlocks choose their patron. Since Viego is fueled by the power of his blade and the Black Mist, the Hexblade is going to be a perfect choice. 
This is going to give us a few features, including an expanded spell list, Hex Warrior, and Hexblade's Curse. Hexblade's Curse is going to be the mark we use on our Q. As a bonus action, you mark a creature for a minute and gain a few benefits against them. You deal bonus damage equal to your proficiency bonus, you land criticals on 19s and 20s, and if the cursed creature dies, you get a little triumph proc that heals you for your warlock level plus your charisma mod. Hex Warrior is going to give us a few proficiencies, but more importantly it's going to let us use our charisma mod for attack and damage rolls instead of strength and dex, which is going to be huge. We also get our pack slots at this level, which are similar to spell slots, though they're in much shorter supply and recharge on a short rest rather than a long one. The only spell we're going to pick up at this level is Charm Person, which acts like the possession Viego does outside of the game. You force a wisdom save on a creature, and if it fails, it regards you as a friendly acquaintance unless you or your friends try to harm it. Second level Warlocks pick up their Eldritch Invocations, which are a set of abilities that attempt to make up for the abysmal pack slot system that they have to deal with. We actually have a lot of these that are important for the build, so I'm going to list them all out here, and you can insert them as you please. First, we took Mask of Many Faces for Viego's passive, where he takes on the visage and abilities of that champion. This allows you to cast Disguise Self at will without a pack slot. Next, we took Devil's Sight, so you can actually see inside your own Black Mist from Darkness. Improved Packed Weapon is an enhancement of the pack boon we're getting next level. It's going to give our Greatsword plus one to damage and attack rolls, and let us use it as a spellcasting focus. Eldritch Smite is going to give our attacks a little oomph and cover the CC portion of our W early. Once per turn when we hit a creature, you can spend a spell slot to deal 1d8 force damage, plus 1d8 per slot level, and knock the creature prone. No save possible. Shroud of Shadow is going to let us cast invisibility at will, allowing us to truly slip away into our black mist for our E. Life Drinker is going to add necrotic damage to our attacks equal to our charisma mod, and finally, Thirsting Blade is going to give us two attacks per attack action instead of one. Level 3 Warlocks gain a Pact Boon from their patron. We're going to use Pact of the Blade to create a great sword for ourselves, and thanks to Hex Warrior, we'll be able to use our Charisma to fuel it. You can also bond a magic weapon you find to fulfill this role, but it takes a one hour ritual to do so. We also pick up second level spells here. Darkness is going to create a 15 foot sphere of magical darkness that wraps around corners and cannot be seen through with non-magical light. This is going to be the black mist we release from ourselves for our E. Fourth level warlocks unlock the first ability score improvement of the build. We're going to lay them all out for you just like the Eldritch Invocations, so you can choose to take them as you please. At fourth level we're going to take Great Weapon Master to get some oomph into our greatsword swings. When you hit a crit or kill a creature, you can make a free attack as a bonus action. More importantly though, you can take a minus 5 to your attack roll to add a flat plus 10 to the damage if you land it. After that, we're going to focus on maxing our charisma and dexterity. At 8th level, we'll round them both out with a point. We'll max our charisma at 12th level, add a modifier point to our dexterity at 16th level, and then we'll max our dex at 19th level as well. Skipping up to 6th level, Hexblades gain the Accursed Spectre, which is like perfect Ruin King flavor even if it doesn't necessarily match his in-game abilities. Once per long rest, you can capture the soul of a humanoid you slay, making it return as a specter to do your bidding until you finish a long rest. Skipping again, 10th level Hexblades pick up the Armor of Hex's feature. Basically your abs are so defined you can roll a d6, and on a 4 or higher, they're distracted and miss their attack. Level 11 Warlocks learn the first of a series of higher level spells called Mystic Arcanum that their patron teaches them. Keep in mind that you can only use these spells once per long rest. We're going to learn the Scatter spell this level to isolate our targets and separate them from their allies for us to slaughter. You choose up to 5 creatures within 30 feet and yeet them to a space within 120 feet as long as you can see it. Though if they're an unwilling creature they need to fail a wisdom save to get moved. This is going to be his ultimate. Level 15 Warlocks learn another Mystic Arcanum, this time for an 8th level spell. We'll choose Power Word Stun for our W. You speak a word of power, or fire off a stream of mist. If the target has less than 150 hit points, it's stunned. No save possible. It can make a constitution save at the end of each of its turns though to try and regain consciousness. 
Oh hey, it's level 17, and we're covering the 9th level Mystic Arcanum. We're going to learn Blade of Disaster, which is a disgusting spell from start to finish. You create a blade-shaped planar rift for a minute as a bonus action. When you create it, you get two free attacks with it as well, each dealing 4d12 force damage, which crits on an 18 or higher. Also, if it does crit, it deals 12d12 force damage. And you can make these attacks on subsequent turns using your bonus action as well. So it's going to be 46, plus 26, plus 68, plus 8d12 if we use Eldritch Smite and Great Weapon Master with both of these Blade of Disaster attacks. This is going to hit for an average of 119, but a max potential of 194. You'll be able to one-shot a creature, then do it all again the next turn, just minus the Eldritch Smite damage. And finally, we'll gain the ability to recharge our Eldritch Smite slots with Eldritch Master. Once per long rest, you can spend a minute asking the mists nicely to recharge your pack slots, and they will. Alright, now that we've completed the build, let's see how we did. First, the good. I didn't think we'd be able to get Viego this fleshed out, but Hexblade feels like a perfect match for him, and a lot of the features sync up perfectly. I also love how much damage this build can do, especially with that awesome Blade of Disaster spell. Now the bad. The only bad thing about this build is that we're a little squishy, and we lack any sort of ranged utility. But besides that, this is a great build I think a lot of people would enjoy playing. So what'd you think? I've included a link to this build via D&D Beyond in the description below, as well as Amazon links to the books used in this build. If you enjoy this type of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have a few awesome rewards including access to our Discord community and monthly homebrew releases. We plan on churning out one league champion build every week. Thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll catch you on the Rift, or in the Forgotten Realms.